Welcome back, everyone, to SBL 12. We're in week four, but I just wanted to cover one of the games from week three. It's Monday, so the day after the last of the previous week, where usually most of the games are played. A lot of interesting matchups. I did not get to see all of what GSC had to offer this week because I've been a little bit busy myself. But um, I do have to say that I did manage to tune in on the game between friend of Mr. Golem and Gorgie. And I have to say it was, uh, well, short of gorgeous. Ha <laughs> ha. And that's because, in my opinion at least, the ending was very, very much a slobber knocker. I, I don't know, like a lot of back and forth, a lot of very awkward hacksy situations. But, you know, Gorgie definitely deserved it at the end because he managed to pull through and it would have really sucked to see him lose to like a thunder miss i can't quite remember what um how it went down a hundred percent i think there was a sleep i think fong had a sleep needle king but if you are interested in finding out i do recommend that you go and check out diophantine's channel he covered the game himself um yeah so all in all spl has been quite interesting for me to follow and not um, not just talking about the uh, GSC games. If we, you know, I'm just going to make sure that I'm actually showing you guys. No, I'm not. <laughs> my B, my B. Well, um, that that's not too important, but now you can see what I'm actually uh, showing you here. And this, these were the matchups for week three of uh, SPL. And if we go over to the spreadsheets, we can see that the Dragon Spiral Tyrants are absolutely dominating. Ray Scarface is the manager. Um, winning three weeks straight um, is definitely possible when there are 10 teams playing, but it's no easy feat. Um, let me tell you that, because it's just really hard to pull off. Um <clears throat> But uh, as you can see, it's it's more it's easier for three teams to uh, have basically a losing record than to have than to have a straight winning record for three weeks. It's already hard enough to win two games and tie. So the Cryonicals and Indie Scooters are also uh, second, and they have a pretty solid records too. Oh no, yeah, so two wins and a tie. There you go. And uh, Dragon Spirals are up ahead. And they've been dominating. And let me tell you, Conflict has been proving to be worthy of that team for sure. He's a veteran. He doesn't need to prove himself. But I'm just, uh, you know, I'm hyping him up. <laughs> so I'm really excited to cover today the match between Conflict and Zakuru. Now, if we go head over to um, one of the last posts there, Conflict just comes down with an amazing win post. <laughs> that I have to share with you. Heard Zakuru asking the magic mirror, 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 who's the best GSCer? I didn't like the answer, so he smashed the mirror with some lucky shots. GG! <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that was uh, nothing short of phenomenal. As you guys can see, you're probably watching my um, OBS window being open for a second quick shout out you know if you guys want to see some more gsc content or if you want um well then i recommend subscribing and if you just want to partake in some of the fun that well people in the server are having i recommend that you just join the gsc discord so moving on to the game and i'm going to make sure this time that i actually have the okay everything is working out just fine so there we go <laughs> um yeah so both players have been doing quite well i so in uh, the past weeks conflict representing the dragon spiral tyrants and zakru representing the bigs zakru has won twice and so has conflict if i am not mistaken now in uh, this GSC game, what I expect to see is something 
pretty special. Zakru has brought the famous counter lead jinx that everyone has been talking about in uh, the higher ups, let's say, among the higher ups in week one against Fong. And it proved to be really, really beneficial for, um, for the matchup. Now, um, whereas in week two, he brought something more typically Zukuru, if I do say so myself, because when I think about Zukuru, I think about stall. And he brought a tentacle stall, so yeah. And he managed to prove that his team, despite all of the things that you can throw at it and all the things that TC had thrown at him, that uh, he managed, he, you can manage to pull through as long as you keep focus. On the other end, conflict has also been uh, really interesting for me to watch. I already covered him in another video, and he brought a really effective Mistrevious stall. So he definitely knows his way around the tier, and he's been playing extremely solidly even in a previous Premier League in uh, GSCPL. So getting into the game, finally. Oh my god, I thought he'd never shut up, you know? We have lead Snorlax versus... Uh, lead Cloyster. The Cloyster lays the spikes but is put to sleep. So, um, beneficial on one point, you know, because Zakuru gets early spikes, and with the Zapdos, he can start, you know, applying a lot of pressure. A lot of mons that might switch into T Bolt, definitely, or Thunder, definitely don't want to be taking spikes. But uh, having Cloyster put to sleep can really suck if Conflict should reveal something that has spin in the back. So we see Lovely Kiss Earthquake. Um, going for the Earthquake here, probably trying to catch something like a Tyranitar or a Golem. But uh, no, Zakuru just comes right in with the Zapdos and throws out a Thunder. But takes a crit. Uh, lucky for him... Um, crit double edge does not KO unboosted, so if so, yeah. But extremely risky because now Zakuru has immediately has to put his um, he has to run to safety basically. His Zapdos needs to run away from that situation. Extremely scary, but it was also a good call for him to uh, stay in on that turn, I guess, because now his phaser can in fact. Um, um, <coughs> phase of the Snorlax should it turn out to be a um, curse user, but I don't think so with, given these three moves, I don't know. Uh, we also saw an interesting bit of switching here, and what this does essentially is, uh, so if we go back to this turn, he dodges a um, another earthquake for no reason in particular except for the fact that his Zapdos is now gaining leftovers HP, which can prove quite crucial. I'm not quite sure of the threshold right now, but um, he should be able to avoid a two-hit KO from this range. So, yeah. Good on Zuck. Switches back to Titar. Takes a crit double edge. Nobody likes to see that. Especially since EQ does about 40%. What's he gonna do? He goes for a rock slide against the Nidoking. So, I, I already figured that because the Snorlax switched first and when two Pokemon switch the faster one switches out first but he didn't switch out so Nidoking resist rock slide throws out an EQ and uh, this Snorlax is very likely to be a Monolax but you know you never know because it's SPL so um, we see two Pretty, you know, two teams that are pretty much veered towards offense here. And here, Conflict does not want to be staying in any further with his Aptos. But uh, good, you know, I guess it's a, an interesting choice because um, offense teams usually are overwhelmed by uh, all of the uh, all of the things that a Cursed Snorlax can do, even with just two or one move. So um, he prioritizes damage on Zakuru's mono curse lax here. Mono because of the pursuit uh, Titar in the back. And he goes for his own spikes. One turn of sleep, doesn't take any damage. Uh, here he has to phase, so he switches to a Titar, but uh, 
You know, if we hadn't seen the other moves, we might have expected that this Snorlax were Omanolax, and it would have been a lot more surprising. So, takes a, a double edge and manages to, well, evade the situation, at least for now, and brings in Zakuru's T-Tar. So now we have a very interesting 1v1, but uh, Conflict is going to get out of there. Brings in the Nido King, but Zakru is uh, staying ahead with this uh, really good prediction. Goes for the Earthquake. Does more damage to Nido King than a Nido King Earthquake does to Titar. <laughs> That's a fun fact. But uh, yeah, it's it's just that strong. And now Zakru doesn't really have much of a choice but to bring in the uh, Zapdos here. It might barely. Okay, so he gets us. Fortunate uh, sleep talk roll here, KOs the Nido. There, that was a one in three chance of uh, um, Nido King dying there. So, yeah. Um, conflict being bringing a really wild uh, offense team with very little in terms of defense. So he has Surf Titar. Okay, that's to catch Golem usually. So he really wants that to to win the spikes where he switches into his Zapdos. Hopefully it's not a non-sleep talk. It is a sleep talk Zapdos. Goes for Hidden Power Ice, hits the Nido King. Now he has one turn in which he needs to get lucky, but he goes to Gengar. Wow, okay, that was really good call. Really good call. So, Thief Gengar, Thief Gengar. Um, I didn't notice uh, the lack of leftovers recovery. My bad. But, um, yeah, so Zakuru is just going to take the opportunity to burn some sleep turns, potentially. The Also, using this Cloister as some sort of sack, that way he can let his Tyranitar in. Usually, Thief Gengar means that the Tyranitar should be safe from any sort of dynamic punch stuff. But I could be wrong. So, yeah, it, it's all up to the discretion of the user of that Gengar. He switches out. Where have I seen this before? Someone switching out from a cloister with Gengar. Well, he, lucky for him, he gets the, the thunder roll. And Zakru reveals his last, which is also Gengar. <laughs> These teams are, in fact, <laughs> identical, if not for the difference in moves. But, uh, you know, maybe it was a counter Nido King on Conflict's end. He brings the Cloister in. Good call. Now, the difference between the two at this point, besides the Snorlax on one end and on the other and the lack of it on the other, is the fact that uh, Conflict still has one, two um, Pokemon that can use Explosion here. So he can create a hell of a lot of momentum right now. And the Tyranitar isn't exactly going to like taking Spikes plus T-Bolt damage from a Gengar. It might even be in range of a two-hit KO here. So going for Cloyster... Could be a pretty good call if I do say so myself. At least he averts the threat from, I don't know, even of Tyranitar gaining HP and the Snorlax. So yeah, good call. And that also lets, if, if Zokuru were for any reason to decide to go to Snorlax, that means conflict. I don't know what he's thinking, but he could just click explosion for free and kill something. So um, what does he want here, though, is the question. I'm not even sure. He probably wants that Snorlax out of the way. So, goes for a Surf because you kind of want to be safe with these uh, explosions and stuff. Let's say that if he were to click Explosion there, he would still have to deal with um, an Earthquake Tyranitar. And he doesn't have, like, the resources to handle both the Earthquake Tyranitar and the Snorlax. 
So Zakuru sacks his uh, Nido King here. Now, Zapdos has somewhat of a free turn to KO Conflict Zapdos. Here he might bring in Gengar, yes. Uh, he can go for an Ice Punch, which definitely KOs. What's he going to do? He goes for the Ice Punch. That would have done about the same, I believe, to the uh, Tyranitar. But now I'm just guessing, and so I don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll just add in the text. Okay, so this is good. This was a good call. So basically in this situation, um, a l so Kuru has to start applying pressure, right? He has to make something happen with the Snorlax if he expects to get anywhere, and he also wants to avoid Snorlax being KO'd by explosion. Now, he takes, first he takes, you know, damage from the Gengar and the spikes, but uh, explosion doesn't KO Snorlax at plus one, unless it crits. However, here, the Snorlax is about to recover some HP. And that can prove crucial. So yeah. But if it were to stay at 11% or under 12%, then it's all, then it was definitely dead. Uh, I'm not really sure how, not sure about how the uh, damage checks in here. It might actually be a good idea to have a look. So if we go to the damage calculator at plus one, how much damage does it take from a rock slide? Because there might even be a chance that it gets a rest. So, Snorlax, let's go here, right? That should mean that we have our, right? And Tyranitar. So, with Snorlax at plus one defense, Rock Slide does 16.6 .6 minimum, 19.6 maximum. The Snorlax is almost definitely dead here. Um, and there's nothing for it to switch into later. So the only thing that Zakuru could decide to do on this turn is to switch it out for fodder or just hope for the best and click rest, which seems like a really good idea. Um, moving back, making sure that this is actually showing us the right thing here. Okay, so. He KOs the Snorlax and, you know, good riddance. <laughs> And he wins a speed tie against this, the the T Tart. If he so, if he had taken an earthquake, the Tyranitar would not have died, I believe. But um, it would not necessarily have survived the Zapdos. And Gengar doesn't want to be facing Zapdos one v one. So yeah, so he goes. Mirrors are so tough. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Um, that was actually rather fast, and if you you can't see the exchange here, but what the two players say is um, conflict says mirrors so are so tough as a crew, especially when my win condition gets crit early. Yeah, happens. I can still hax you though, but uh, yeah, they hax each other, and I think they're both aware of the fact that uh, you know sometimes this sort of thing happens especially at uh in uh in situations where you wouldn't expect it to happen so often like at a high level but um in any case <laughs> i think it was quite interesting if i do say so myself so if you guys enjoyed the video um stay tuned for some future content and leave a like if you're interested i appreciate um, all of the people that have been following the scene more closely and I hope to provide you with some more valuable commentary because I don't just upload when I think I should I also think I need to do things properly and that's quite it so GG's and I love you all <laughs>